In the name of the beneficent and merciful God, peace and the mercy and blessings of God be with you. Um, thank you. Thank you for watching. I am your brother in faith, uh, Shabir Ali. And today I bring you another uh, book review. Today I'm reviewing this book, which is entitled, uh, uh, What is the Origin of Man? The Answers of Science and the Holy Scriptures by Dr. Maurice Bouquet. Uh, Dr. Maurice Bouquet uh, wrote another famous book, which I've reviewed uh, already, The Bible, the Quran, and Science. This is another uh, one of his uh, important uh, books. And in this book, uh, he uh, first goes into great detail about uh, the um, uh, science and, uh, and, and what scientists have uh, discovered about uh, the uh, theory of evolution, how they've arrived at that theory, the twists and turns uh, uh, through uh, Lamarck and, and uh, about transformation and the nature of transformation, how does it occur to Darwin uh, on natural selection. And, um, and then he uh, discusses uh, modern ideas about uh, cellular uh, biology and uh, evolution uh, of, uh, of the cell. And uh, he more um, broadly traces uh, the development of life on Earth in general, uh, from unicellular origins uh, to multicellular organisms. Uh, to eventually uh, invertebrates and then vertebrates uh, through uh, to um, uh, amphibians and uh, reptiles uh, leading to birds and also uh, on the other hand to mammals and uh, eventually to human uh, beings. And then he goes into the scriptures. He looks at uh, the Bible, first the, the, the Old Testament, uh, and then also the New Testament uh, to look at uh, way, whether or not uh, the uh, Holy Scriptures are compatible uh, with uh, the modern um, uh, discovery. And uh, he finds that uh, the um, a Bible has had to go through a lot of um, uh, uh, reinterpretation in the light of modern discoveries in order to make the Bible somehow compatible uh, with uh, modern science. But he says that some things are just uh, difficult uh, to align with modern science. For example, the genealogies of Jesus uh, given, uh, tracing all the way back to Adam, uh, would um, be uh, not enough time for the uh, evolution of human beings and, and life on, on earth. When he comes to the Quran, he quotes many passages, and uh, I was surprised uh, recently, pleasantly surprised, uh, to hear a lecture by him in which he actually quotes the verses of the Quran in Arabic. He, he, he reads them out in, in Arabic, and, uh, and his pronunciation sounds perfect. Here too, in his book, he quotes some passages from the, from the Quran that deal with the subject of, uh, as he would interpret it, as the evolution of life in general and of man in particular. So Surah 21, verse number 30, uh, he quotes on page 166 of the book, uh, uh, Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together. Then we clothed them asunder and we got every living thing out of water. Will they not then believe? Uh, so he sees this as a verse that deals with... Um, the aquatic origin of life. He says, life is in fact of aquatic origin and water is the major component of all living cells. Without water, life is impossible. Uh, when the possibility of life on another planet is discussed, the first question is always, is there a sufficient quantity, is, is there a sufficient quantity of water to support life? And uh, then he, he quotes uh, the same, uh, uh, Surah 20 rather, uh, verse number 53. Uh, God is the one who sent down water from the sky, and thereby we brought forth pairs of plants, each separate from uh, the other. Uh, so he, he shows by this verse that uh, there is a continuing uh, evolution and development and growth uh, of life, all of this uh, under God's uh, supervision and arrangement and creation. Uh, Surah 24, verse number 45, uh, God created uh, every uh, living thing, uh, every animal from uh, water. And uh, he says here, as we shall see later on, the word may also be applied to seminal liquid. Uh, so he sees that these statements in the Quran are in fact in harmony with uh, modern uh, science. Uh, in uh, Surah 20, verse number 53, um, uh, the, the same verse which we already looked at, 
he says one of a pair uh, is the translation of zauj, which uh, has the plural as waj, which uh, the original meaning of that is uh, that which in the company of another forms a pair. The word may just as readily be applied to a married couple as to a pair of shoes. And uh, he sees that uh, in the Quran again, in Surah 13, verse number three, uh, it says, وَمِنْ كُلِّ ثَمَرَاتِ جَعَلَ فِيهَا زَوْجَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ Of all fruits, God placed on earth two of a pair. This statement, he says, implies the existence of male and female organs in all the various species of fruit. It is in perfect agreement with the data discovered at a much later period uh, concerning the formation of uh, fruit. Uh, for every type comes uh, from uh, vegetals uh, possessing sexual organs, even if certain varieties such as the banana originate from non-fertilized uh, flowers. So he sees that uh, evolution is happening and uh, in, in many different uh, areas of, uh, of life on earth. And then he turns uh, to the creation of man. He says, uh, Allah is the one who has caused uh, uh, you to be grown uh, from the earth as a growth, uh, as uh, almost like vegetation. Then he will return you to it and he will uh, extract you from it one more time. And Surah 20, verse number 55, From it we created you, to it we're going to return you, and from it we're going to raise you up one more time. Uh, so. The, the components of the ground um, are, are, are there in the formation of the, of the human uh, person. And uh, he, God says, and sha'akum min al ard, he, God has created you or initiated you from the earth. Fa'inna uh, khalaqna kum min turab. He has several verses like this showing that God created you from, uh, from the, the, the earth and in various forms uh, and at various stages. And then coming more to the transformation of human beings, uh, Surah 7, verse number 11 says, uh, So we created you, uh, and thereupon we gave you form. Thereupon we told the angels to bow down to Adam. In Surah 15, verses 28 to 29, uh, he uh, cites the Quran to say, so God created the human being from a molded mud. And then uh, Surah 82, verses 7 and 8 uh, says, الَّذِي خَلَقَكَ فَصَوَّاكَ فَعَدَلَكَ God is the one who created you, then fashioned you harmoniously in due uh, proportion. And uh, another passage says, God fashioned man according to the best organizational plan. And uh, more to our um, uh, context, uh, Surah 71, verse number 14 says, وَقَدْ خَلَقَكُمْ atwara." God created you in phases or in stages. Uh, so he sees that uh, the Quranic uh, passages do lend themselves to be uh, interpreted in a way uh, that is in harmony with uh, modern science and in harmony with the idea of uh, the evolution of the human race. But what about the origin, about uh, uh, the origin of the human uh, species? He says that uh, the, the evolution of life in general has been such that uh, the, 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 the emerging species uh, are shown to be adaptable to their environment. As the environment changes, the species uh, themselves uh, develop to be adaptable to the environment. And when human beings uh, were to appear, human beings would have to appear in a form uh, that would be suitable to, to the environment at the time. And that means that human beings would have to have a similar physical composition uh, and appearance to uh, those uh, creatures which are already on the earth at the time. So if we uh, understand that God created human beings afresh uh, um, and, and is not uh, part of the whole evolutionary stream, then still human beings created and placed on earth at a particular time in our history uh, in the history of the earth would have to be similar to the creatures which are already there on the ground and fully adapted to, to their environment, uh, since human beings will be placed in the same environment. Uh, so uh, that could be a possibility that God created human beings afresh and placed them there at that time and place, looking like other creatures around them. 
Or another possibility that he entertains is the possibility that uh, human beings themselves are part of that whole evolutionary uh, stream. Uh, so one reading this book would come away with the two possibilities, the choice to be made between the two. Altogether, I find that it's a very useful book in thinking about these possibilities. And uh, it, it is uh, a very detailed uh, book. Uh, is there anything that I didn't like about the book? Well, the book was written in French and translated into English. Uh, that's not bad in itself. Uh, but what it means is that uh, the author has uh, uh, called a lot of quotations uh, from uh, writers and scientists that we don't so readily uh, recognize, uh, maybe writers in French and uh, some other European uh, languages. Whereas if this book was originally written in English, uh, most naturally it would have cited scientists that we are more known to us, uh, especially in the field of, uh, of uh, evolution uh, or evolutionary biology. Nonetheless, uh, this is a very useful book, uh, not only for understanding the whole um, uh, theory of uh, evolution as much as we could as laypersons, but it is also most importantly important for placing the uh, religious uh, discussion side by side with that scientific discussion. Uh, it's useful for uh, expounding how uh, the scriptures, the, the Bible, both its Old and New Testaments, uh, compare with uh, modern uh, knowledge and also uh, how the Quran is compatible uh, with uh, what we discover in terms of modern knowledge and the general theory of uh, evolution. So this is a book that has been meant a lot to me. Over the years, I've referred to it again and again, uh, and uh, it has actually changed my life. And I hope that it will make a difference in your life. Perhaps it might even change yours. My dear friends, I want to appeal to you to support the important work we're doing this Ramadan. Visit QuranSpeaks.com and click Donate. May God reward you for your generosity and may you have a blessed Ramadan.